Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 rebuilding story from Helsingborg with me, Daniel. It's part 20 today and as well as still being on a look for another job in Scandinavia, we are in a title race as again we rise towards the top of the Swedish table. Our first fears from earlier in the season have not been founded as such as we've struggled a little bit for form but have still picked up enough results and today we start with first v second at the top of the Premier League table. It's your Gardens versus Helsingborg. We then got away to bottom side Van Armo the week after. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on and what's been happening off the pitch, what jobs we've been going for too, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. Keep your eyes peeled from this Sunday as our niche FM experiments return for the 2022 editions. There's also another new top three and you can find all the key playlists including our one club story with Hemel, the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store up in the eye above. And you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But we have got a lot to get through here in terms of fixtures because since you were last with me we've played a lot of games and we've had, I guess, a bit of a turning point at a certain stage. So if we go and have a look at the schedule, the season started atrociously. You were with me for that 1-0 defeat against Hammerbeat where we weren't inspired at all. We followed it up by blowing a two-goal lead away at Vastaras the following match. Anthony van den Herk and Taha Rally had given me a little bit of comfort after half an hour. I then made defensive changes towards the end because of fitness issues. And my word, did they backfire. In the last 15, we threw away two goals. They had one disallowed for offside as well. It could have been a very scary moment. As could the following game against Nurkapin, which I am highlighting as our turning point of the year. We were 2-1 down and down to 10 men after an hour. Hendrickson was the man sent off. We had Van den Herk who'd given us the opener before two goals had turned it around before half time. Hendrickson sent off on the hour mark, but then off the bench, David Seeger became a hero. And Anthony Van den Herk in the 93rd minute nicked us a winner when somehow we were laying out defensively trying to protect our draw. So a miraculous result, a crucial moment. And then backed up by an even more important one. Anthony van den Herk gave us a 1-0 lead against Malmo, the rivals, just about into the second half. And we somehow clung on for it. A 1-0 win, two gritty, ugly results and two games we didn't deserve to win by any means. But we got our first two wins of the season. And that was the catalyst for our success now. Because as you can see, following a little blip against Varbergs where we drew one all away from home. We've won three back-to-back -back games. We look convincing in a couple. But we've still been gritty when we need to. We've certainly not hit top form. We're certainly not flowing. But we're picking up results. So I'll be interested to see how that fares today against the top team in the league. Degger Fours away was a 3-1 win. Pretty comprehensive one that as Anthony van den Herk pulled it away in the second half. Against Gothenburg at home, a really good performance. Pegged back from an early Seager goal. But Hendrickson and van den Herk again getting goals for us. And then a 1-0 win at home to Sundsvall. As we had Anthony van den Herk to thank yet again for giving us the lead late in the first half. Now we're sort of back to a game a week until the pre-season Champions League fixtures start in July. That's when we're going to get a real test with two games a week. So we do need to try and build a lead by that point. And with it being Champions League qualifying, we should be guaranteed group stage football of some form. But are we still going to be here? Because if we go and have a look at the job centre, you know we've been looking to rebuild Scandinavia and get jobs elsewhere in the pyramid. So let's have a look at what's come up now. Because there is another job in the second tier of Danish football. And we've applied for it. I'm not sure what our chances are. And I don't really know what to expect. Having been rejected by the weakest team in that division. But the job is in the bottom half. A team that finished 31 points ahead of Fremad. Who we applied for last time and got rejected for after interview. So I'm not sure whether we're going to get a chance at the job. But it's one we've applied for anyway. And if we go to the job security. There's more jobs in Denmark. And if we go to the insecure ones. There's also jobs in Norway starting to crop up too. So it could be on the move before too long. I think I've decided unless we have some remarkable run in Europe this year. If we don't get a job before the end of the calendar year. Or the end of this season with Helsingborg. I think we probably will call it an end to the save. But I do want to see how we're able to progress. And today if your gardens beat us. It could prove a few of you right, saying that we might actually get a proper title race this year. With it not being a condensed year for the World Cup, with some other teams in the league having European money, and new ones having it to follow later in the year. 
Maybe this is our best chance at getting a competition. But the transfer window didn't inspire. The start to the season, despite us being poor, hasn't led us to fall behind. So I'm not sure what we're going to get out of the next few months today. Probably gives us a bit of an indication. Jagardens v Helsingborg, first v second, both on 17 points. But they're looking slightly better in front of goal. We've got a couple of players out. So let's go and have a look at the 11 that we can put forward for today's game. Okay then, no real surprises in our starting 11. In terms of summer signings or winter signings, as I keep getting fooled by it, it's still just Correa in there. Hatchin is the man we've gone for at left back and Valencia is in in the middle because of Hendrickson missing. However, I do want to point out a couple of positives on the bench, which are Gravius and Seager. Two of the other signings in the off-season. Now, both are on the bench today because they're struggling a bit with fitness and fatigue after recent knocks. But I've got to say, those two lads are definitely the standouts on the bench. And I will say that Seager's pushing Lerpa, which is an incredible achievement given how good he's been for us. And if we look at Gravius in the middle, he's someone who can step in for Lingman and it doesn't even look like he's away. He's knocking on the door for Almajed's place and he's looking a real good player. So two very good signings in the window from Grunkfist, but I'm not sure that they're the ones to take us to the next level in Europe, but may give us a bit more squad depth, which is helpful nonetheless. So our team for today is Jolson in goal. We've got Correa and Hadjin at fullbacks with Weyberg and Vidal at centre-half. Almajed, Valencia and Lingman, the midfield three. Lerpa, Ali and Vandenherk, the free scoring star up front. He's having his best spell he's ever had under our management. And as we go away to the top side today, we could do with him nicking us a victory to send us top of the league. Let's go and see if he can do it. And here is the side we're up against. The team, of course, knocked us out in the Swedish Cup earlier in the year when we were looking for other jobs. They've got some good players. Bruno Gaspar was key on that day. They've got quality up front. They're a solid team. Joel Osoro still on the bench for them, the former Sunderland man. But let's see how we get on in the first half. We asked the lads to prove a point. We've got most of them motivated. We've got the morale back up. A few of the unhappy players gone. But what are we going to produce here? Because this is a strong team. That they put out. They've got a lot of good wide players. We're generally stronger in the middle of the pitch. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. The fullback's going to be key for us here. What we are getting recently though is a lot of drab games and games where we've been very defensive. So after the first 15 minutes where nothing's happened, it's no surprise to see the hosts on the attack. Very sparsely populated stadium, albeit it's double the size of ours, as they put in Svensson. and it's a lovely ball over the top and we are behind. This is a proper title race this year. And while it's frustrating that we came up and were able to win the league so easily, we are at least getting a bit of a challenge now as Correa throws down the right-hand side towards Vandenhoek, who loses out in the air and is back to the goalkeeper Diawara. But generally on the road, we have struggled to keep clean sheets. Most of our 1-0 wins have been at home. Away, we've had a couple of 3-1s against poorer sides and largely draws and scoring draws against teams in the middle or top end of the league as Weyberg picks it up at centre-half to Hadjim. Options down the line. Tahar Ali, one of them, has improved recently but still a little inconsistent. As Almajed goes back to Kasper Vidal, the youngster, seems to have hit his ceiling with us and I wonder how long before he has to move on as that challenge may be a pivotal point of this game. Lerpa scythed down by Isherwood. It was a terrible tackle and it has to be a red card. It is. A change is made. The goal scorer Svensson is off. But with 20 minutes gone, it's now 11 v 10. We can go positive. They're camping men behind the ball. And I do wonder if that can give us a route back into the game. Doesn't look like it, based on what we've seen since, or haven't seen, in fact. And actually, we're back for Jagard and set piece. Dangerous area. Headers flicked onto the top of the bar. Clips it on its way over. It was far too easy. And we're just not able to get on the front foot. We've gone positive, as has been recommended. But I might have to go attacking and try and chase this game because we've not looked like scoring. If we get through the dressing room, we're 1-0 down at half time. We get the lads to prove a point. We've got a few that are nervous. Let's go attacking. Diawara up with a goal kick for Gardens. Nasberg plays it out to Lofgren. Into midfield. In fact, goes wide to Bruno Gaspar first. He plays into the middle. They've just left the one up front here of the hosts. And they're seeming to get a bit of support up to him as we're still not tracking the midfield runners. And they still look very confident in possession, in fairness. Johnson chips it over. Sook's unmarked. Keepers come to no man's land. That is awful. We're going to go attack him. We're going to tell the lads to do a bit more. We've not had any sign yet, though. We've got a set piece with Lingman. And Kasper Vidal is brought down. A very easy set piece to win. It's a penalty kick. It'll be Anthony Vandenhoek. He's a scoring machine this season. 
But can he convert from the spot? Of course he can. Keeper went the right way, but it's hit with a plumb into the corner. 15 goals for the season already. Anthony Vandenhoek is very much in form. 1-1 against the runner play and against 10 men. We should now be on top as Lingman gets the ball wide to Hadjin. Into Tahar Ali and Lingman. Vandenhoek to Lingman. Here comes the style. Here comes the swagger. Good save Diawara to deny Lerper. Another corner kick. Another chance for the big guns. This game has just flipped on its head. And now Lingman's got a chance to put another one in. Towards Vido again. Lerper gets there first. Heads just over the bar. Jagardens falling apart a bit here. Helsingborg on top. But can they take advantage and nick the three points? Well, we've got about 20 minutes to go. We're going to see out this highlight and then make changes. Because we've not looked great recently. Got another booking at left back. Seems to be a common theme at the moment. I guess maybe where Tahar Ali's tucking in or the left winger is, whoever it is. It does leave the left back a little more exposed than Correa on the right. And Hatchin's not as good a player as Almajed finds Valencia and Vandenhoek. Back to Almajed, to Lerpa, space to run into on the right. Can he find the right cross? There's three or four in the middle. Delivers towards Vandenhoek. Heads just over. Now it's time for the changes. I've got to pick three, but I'm not sure what to go for. Lerpa's knackered. We'll bring on Seager, who scored a few crucial goals this year. Kaid on the left for Tahar Ali, who's been poor. And Hajin off for Tersic at left back. Let's hope these lads can do it. We're going all out. We're trying to win the game. I'm just hoping we can find a solution. We're going to encourage them, get them thinking positively, get them on the front foot. Ten minutes to win it. We've been the better side. We've had the better expected goals. But we're just not finding that breakthrough and that ruthlessness in front of goal at the minute. Lots of one nils and away from home. Lots of frustrating draws. A result I would have definitely taken at the start of the game. But the way it panned out, yeah, I'm not so convinced. We should have probably won that. We should be top of the league. As it is, Shagardens hold on to top spot. I'll wait to bottom side for Narmo next. I'll see you for that in a minute. Fitness test time after a quiet week on the job news front. However, we have applied for one more job. If we go to the centre, another job has popped up in Denmark. And this time, a job we might want to consider. Viborg, another team in the second tier but one with a slightly bigger reputation, one that's professional fully throughout the club. It's going to be an interesting summer to see which jobs come up and whether we get any opportunities at interviews, but not the favourite for any of them at the moment. There are plenty more on the horizon. I'm waiting to see if any of the big jobs in Denmark come up, or maybe even one in Norway, which has been linked in recent weeks. And it's the side who are bottom of the league too, with some others from the second tier available. So we're going to keep an eye on that over the next couple of episodes. But at the moment, we're happy to be content at Helsingborg. What's frustrating is after the last episode where we dropped points against the top side, Elfsborg couldn't take advantage. They were then held as well. A home to the bottom side, Venamo, who are now second bottom, who we play today. And that means that... There's just not that push for the title, which should be there. They should be running away. Malmo were held at home to a bottom half side in Orgray. Hammerby held away to the side that are now bottom of the league. It's so frustrating that they're not taking advantage and getting up the top of the league. But we're going to have to come back to that. For now, it is all about us trying to get three points. And away at Varnamo, that should be a strong possibility. They're one of the smallest sides in the league. They came up with us in the first season. But what are they going to be able to achieve this year? In terms of the team news, Hendrickson is back. He comes in for Valencia, who goes onto the bench. Garnas struggling after playing for the reserves in the week. He'll be replaced by... I don't know if anyone's available to replace him. So I'm going to chuck James Shea on the bench. He deserves an outing in the squad. The rest of the team will stay exactly the same. Apart from the change at left back, I just can't decide who's first choice out of them. But the rest of it is familiar. So Hendrickson and Tersic in. Both Hadjin and Valencia drop to the bench. Now what can we produce? A way to relegation favourites as we push for top spot in the Swedish top tier. Well, first standout news for Venamo, and maybe a reason they're struggling, is no Leonardo Ajoa by the looks of it. He's someone who was key to their game plan as a target man last year. Don't recognise many of the other names in the team, but let's focus on ourselves. We'll ask the lads to prove a point. We need to be ruthless in front of goal. We've got to start supporting Vandenhoek. Lerp is not scoring as many this year, 
Ali's been inconsistent in spells, and the midfielders haven't really got forward and contributed, which is a surprise given their value last season. In early doors, though, it is Van Armo on the attack, as Silverholt puts a cross into the back post, Correa heads away. Williams brings it down on the left, though. Van Armo started well here. Kendall back to De Vries. And into midfield, it's wide to Williams. Two in the box. One's unmarked. It's a good save from Jolson. Down to his right to tip wide. It'll be a corner kick. That could have been a shocking start as it's a corner kick for Johansson. In swinger to the back post. Ericsson up unmarked. Heads just wide at the post. A warning sign to start with for Helsingborg. We're playing straight out from the goal kick. Can we get on the front foot? Tersic gets it from Weyberg at left back. Plays down the line to Tahar Ali. Takes on his man, forced inside. Big switch of play, Lerper loses out in the air. Headed away as far as Correa and Hendrickson. Lingman to Van den Herk. Ali puts it into Lerper. It's brilliant football, but he was just offside. The flag goes up. Keeper wasn't to know, saved it anyway. But it's still Van Armo with the only chances so far. And at the moment, we're down to third place. As Lerper holds the ball up on the right to Almajed. Been a much more action-packed 15 minutes than we used to see in, in recent weeks, as Van Armo nick it high again. Through ball to the inverted left winger, and his shot hits the post. We are in trouble, because we have not turned up at the start of this one. We're going to have to demand a bit more. We're not getting a good performance. We're going to go positive, get on the front foot. It has backfired at times this season, but I don't see another option. It's eight shots to none. Kendall's got the cross again from a set piece. Vanderson edged just over. Maybe that point that they got against second placed Elfsborg isn't so bad now. Because Elfsborg are winning 2-0 at home and we're really struggling. I don't know why Venamo are bottom based on this performance. And I don't know why we are competing at the top. As Venderson gets it again to Weiberg. Cutting in from the left. This winger has caused us all sorts of trouble. His shot this time pretty comfortable for Jolson. But we need to cling on to the break. This has been a disastrous display. What on earth is going on back there? No expected goals. No shots at all. I'm going to point the finger. I mean, it's a pathetic display. The second half has to be better. There'll be early changes if it's not. And early doors, it looks the same pattern again. Venamo free kick just inside our half. Good challenge from Weyberg, who had to get it right on a yellow. And the through ball's over hit to Jolson. Can we now counter? We have had a couple of shots on the stats, but nothing to suggest that we're going to create a goal. Nothing to suggest that we deserve even an attacking highlight, as Hendrickson finds Almajed. Up towards Bandon Herc. We know the quality he's got in key moments. Gets dragged wide, goes down the right-hand side. Inside to Lerper, two in the middle. Cuts it back to Vanden Herc. Bought down for a penalty. The most undeserved chance. As Vanden Herk, according to the commentary, went down looking for the decision. Well, he got it. Why is he not taking it? Oh, Hendrickson's back. Sends the keeper the wrong way. And after a turgid, awful, pathetic performance, we somehow have the lead. So undeserved. 12 shots to 3. But with an hour gone, we're 1-0 up. And I almost feel sorry for Van Armo. They've been so much better than us. We're going to drop back to balance, get some changes on. But that poor side deserved to be winning. I'm going to take the two wingers off again who have really struggled to get going. And I'm also going to bring on Gravius for Lingman who's not had his best game. Another defensive yellow card. We've got to be careful of those. With an hour gone, we're 1-0 up. We need to start dictating play. It's just a couple of minutes later. We're back playing out from the back with Jolson's goal kick. Two centre-halves keeping it amongst themselves and into Gravius. He releases Kaid, the substitute left winger. And back to Gravius again who we've not seen much of on camera. Finds his fellow new man Seager and Correa. To Hendrickson and back to Almajed. That's much better. Keeping the ball in the middle. I say just as we give it away with a long hoof. But Seager gets it again. Back to Correa on the right. Releases Seager. Nice to see the subs making an impact. He gets to the byline. Cross the flex. It's up. Will it be cleared away? It is. Kendall back to De Vries who hoofs downfield. But only as far as Kasper Vidal. To Almajed in the centre circle. And Weyberg. Options left of him. Goes long towards Seager. He's got him behind the left back. David Seeger off the bench. He's made a real impact this season. And you can see there the substitutes. They've got composure on the ball. They're technically very good. And have given us a real lifeline in this game. We're two up despite only having four shots. But that lead has been halved immediately. It's a simple set piece which we've not marked from. We've been a lot worse from those this season. And the three heads in. 2-1. Vanamo back in it. And you have to say, deservedly so, on the balance of play overall.
Though we've got a long throw with just over 10 minutes to go. We seem to be getting a bit more control now. Kasper Vidal finds Hendrickson, smashes it from distance against the bar. It'd be a great result if we could hold on for another gritty win, but 20 shots to six for our relegation-threatened rivals. They have been by far the better side, but they can't defend, thankfully. And this man off the bench has made a massive difference, though he chips that one straight into the keeper's hands. Commentator's curse there. But 2-1 would be a wonderful scoreline, given the match, given the way we've been outplayed. There are a lot of warning signs in almost all of our performances. All of the top sides have won, so it makes no difference to us in terms of the table. But what are three points to get when we have been far from our best? And to be fair, Varnamo, you've got a feel for them. They were absolutely brilliant. Let's go and have a look at the schedule, see when when it's going to be back. So as the title race seemingly becomes a tight three-horse race, we prepare for what's going to be another big European campaign. We come back in early July for that. We, of course, will have job news in the meantime if it pops up. But if not, we'll be back somewhere around here when we enter Champions League qualifying as league winners last season. If you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy a very tense episode on the pitch, please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you think of the performances, because... Yes, it's great that we're winning and we're creating an unbeaten run, but we are not convincing at all. Some frustrating draws away off camera. We drew against the bottom side in the league. We struggled to that win against the second bottom side for Namo. And even at the top, when we're playing the teams with 10 men, we can't take advantage. We just not got enough quality overall. And I feel like it's time we try and get out. If you want to stay up to date and find out if we do though, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Keep your eyes peeled for our two new Sunday series as the niche experiments return in addition to our new top three playlist. You can find links to those up in the eye above as well as the One Club Story, Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store. And thank you as always for your incredible support. The top threes are above my head now. Give them a try if you haven't already. I'll see you back here in a couple of days time as we try our best to get a new job, or alternatively, make our Champions League qualifying debut. See you there.